Thank you. No, it's good. He was just replacing him. We good? Oh, cool. I like that. I didn't actually read the instructions. I would just talked about it a little bit. <laughs> I, I got the gist of it all. So, you know. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, good afternoon. Uh, hope you enjoyed Lewis's talk, if you were here for that. If not, I hope you've been enjoying uh, Southeast Linux Fest so far. Um, so today I'm going to talk about Rocky Linux's uh, special interest groups, or SIGs. Uh, they really are kind of like the lifeblood of what makes up everything great about Rocky Linux, um, and it really defines how we interact with our upstream communities as well. So today I'm going to give a brief overview of Rocky Linux and the RESF, and then dive into um, our special interest groups and how you might want to get involved in, in some of those and how you can go about doing that. So um, about me, I am, my name is Neil Hanlon. I work for Control IQ. CIQ is one of the um, sponsors and partners of the Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation. Um, they pay me to work on Rocky Linux and other uh, open source projects like OpenELA, um, Werewolf, Ascender, etc. cetera, Apptainer. Um, generally, they pay me to just work in upstream communities. So I'm involved in Fedora Linux. I'm in uh, the CentOS project in, in CentOS Stream, part of the ELN project in, in helping to work build out the next versions of CentOS Stream. Uh, I'm also involved in uh, OpenStack Ansible and uh, the OpenStack, uh, Open Infra kind of ecosystem generally. Uh, there's a lot of projects in OpenStack that now that are running on top of or run CI tests on top of uh, Rocky, and there's a, a significant amount of usage on that in, in a lot of different OpenStack areas, um, independently of the great work that CentOS Stream and Red Hat do in uh, the RDO, Red Hat distribution of OpenStack, or RPM distribution of o OpenStack. Um, so. Above and beyond all of that, uh, I'm one of the founders of the Rocky Linux um, project with Lewis, kind of echoing his sentiments from earlier. Uh, randomly ended up here and, and super happy to be, you know, being paid to work on open source and, and be involved in these communities and come here and talk to fine folks like you. Um, so Rocky Linux, if you don't know, is a community-driven enterprise Linux distribution. Um, like our direct upstream, which is Red Hat, our community cares a lot about stability and not just the software. Uh, and so um, organizing, uh, knowing that the organization behind something that is someone that they can trust for 15, 20, 30 years down the line um, is, is something that's really important to a lot of the people that are using Rocky and had used CentOS Linux before it. So Rocky was created after the CentOS project shifted their focus towards CentOS Stream and deprecated CentOS Linux. Uh, and we aim to be 100% compatible with the enterprise Linux standard. So Rocky is part of the enterprise, uh, Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation, uh, or RESF. Uh, myself and the other co-founders uh, spent a lot of time building up the RESF guideline, or yeah, RESF charter and uh, policies and everything around the, the governance for RESF to make sure that it stays in community control and um, that we aren't beholden to any single corporation's whims or interests or really any single person's whims or interests. Um, I'm really proud of this vision here, you know, the, the, to create and nurture a community of individuals because um, that's really what Rocky was started as. It was just a community of individuals on IRC and Slack and then later Mattermost and Matrix and email and everywhere else um, coming together to steward open enterprise Linux, uh, community enterprise Linux. A and so um, creating and nurturing that, org that community there is really what our special interest groups are 100% are about. So a little bit of organization, um, the Rocky, Enterprise Software Foundation has a board. There's a, a number of elected individuals who are part of that board uh, from 
both within the project from the Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation membership, uh, but as well, we have, I think, four um, independent members who were also voted on by the community, uh, or by our membership, rather, to represent um, more kind of broad interests in the Rocky project. So not just thinking about what is the Rocky project, but getting external perspectives from open source leaders uh, and, and other individuals that have, uh, you know, wealths of knowledge in, in different areas to advise and help Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation grow and to govern Rocky Linux and other future projects. Um, so underneath that, we have a couple of projects. There's right now it's Rocky Linux and we have Peridot, which is our build system. Um, but the Rocky Linux board is also voted on by the membership of the Rocky, Linux, or Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation. And largely, we have a, a group of team leads that are kind of separated into these two general buckets of, of technical steering and outreach. Um, the technical steering groups involve uh, our teams, our, our infrastructure and release engineering groups, our teams rather, our security team and our testing team. And then on the outreach side, we have our community kind of operations folks, uh, as well as documentation and design and web and all the folks that keep our um, website working, looking good, uh, hopefully responding to all the correct queries um, and, and just helping with the marketing and uh, external kind of aspects of what it takes to build Rocky. Because it's not just throwing packages together. There's a lot that goes into it and often we get to the end of a release cycle and we're pushing stuff out and we're like, oh, right, we need to go write a release announcement and go fix all this stuff. And uh, you know, those teams are, are folks that we can count on to say, hey, like, can you just go do this? <laughs> we just spent three weeks you know, fighting RPM and mock and, and building packages and getting stuff working and testing it all. Um, so it, it's really great to have a community uh, team and outreach group that is able to take care of a lot of the minutia of releasing that um, is a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of thankless work. So we, we do thank them a lot. Um, the groups uh, here, the teams, are all responsible for the outputs of our special interest groups, um, ensuring they adhere to our best practices around security and our data policies, um, in that they don't release like non-free or other tainted softwares. Um, kind of the, the thing I brought up last time I gave this talk was about the XZ vulnerability that had come up just recently then, um, almost like a week before that, we had had a, a member wanting to like add firmware blobs to our uh, alt, alt, alt arch sig um, to support some some various like single board computers or uh, and, and stuff and it kind of just turned a whole different light on what we need to be ensuring policy wise for the security of our users and and uh, what we what steps we can take there um, so I want to dive into the the teams a little bit further. Um, the first of the technical teams is release engineering. Uh, it's led by Louis Abel and Mustafa Gezin. Um, they, the, the teams here are, are completely responsible and dedicated towards the core like, goal and mission of Rocky, which is the exactly compatible with enterprise Linux version. Um, so the release engineering team is responsible for core Rocky, all of the different releases for 8, 9, 10 when it comes up, 11. That's why I'm involved in Fedora and CentOS and, and ELN to um, keep an eye on what's going on there, to also um, be involved and participate and help uh, steer the direction of where those projects are going. Um, so that's what release engineering does. They, they, they steer the direction of the Rocky Linux project uh, from, a te from a technical aspect. Um, there's a lot of bleed between release engineering and infrastructure for pretty obvious reasons. Um, infrastructure takes care of all of the infrastructure for the RESF at this point, so it's not just Rocky Linux, but we maintain um, mailing lists for all of the RESF, uh, various other infrastructures uh, as needed, and um, are always expanding that. But uh, generally, for the Rocky Linux side of it, we're um, taking care of the build architecture, all of the servers, across the, the globe and different archi our different data centers. We do the infrastructure as code for all of our cloud stuff, um, all that kind of stuff, basically. Um, that's led by myself and Taylor Goodwill. Um, security is led by our uh, two security folks, Rob Felsberg and Scott Shin. Um, Scott actually helped write DISA STIG, uh, if you're familiar with that policy. So um, they provide a lot of oversight and guidance for 
our teams and our projects and our SIGs, of course, for um, what we should be doing, what we can be doing, and um, moreover, less about the like producing packages and hardening Rocky Linux, but more about the um, governance and security side of the organization itself. Uh, and finally, testing. Um, you'll notice testing is the only one here that doesn't have a second team lead. We are looking for another team lead, so if that's something you're interested in, um, we we always want to have at least two team leads for um, you know kind of bus factor purposes. Um, however, you know the testing team is a, a really great way to get involved in Rocky Linux and, and make a really big difference. Um, we have, I think, we have at least one or two people join and participate new like new people join and participate in the testing process with every release that we do um, and so if it if you just want to get your name <laughs> on a release come and help us and stick around and we'll uh you know you can get your name on on a release and and, and be part of things um, on the community operations and outreach side uh, we've got our community team led by krista berdeen and uh, alexia they moderate and take care of all of our outreach and and you know, social media is coming to conferences like this, handling um, uh, community like you know disputes or you know our code of conduct and um, all that sort of work around building a community that can sustain and last and, and be um, a home for future projects to um, be enabled for, for in perpetuity, basically, right? So um, we also have our documentation team. Um, led by Wallace Inca and, and Steve Spencer. Um, this is docs.rockylinux.org. You know, I think we have really great documentation. Um, we've, uh, interestingly, our most requested page, according to our analytics, is for uh, NVChad, which is like a IDE sort of configuration on top of NeoVim. Um, so it's not really Rocky Linux related at all, but um, it kind of, I think, leads or speaks towards the quality of the documentation that we aim to provide and how useful it can be regardless of uh, what you're doing because it's not really rocky specific it's it's enterprise Linux specific in that like you're gonna have DNF commands and, and XYZ and you're gonna be talking about software that's available on Rocky but it's also an excellent uh, place to contribute general documentation guides um, we have a individual who has written a series of like open source books about systems administration and Ansible and bash scripting and uh, he has published all of those as well on, on the Rocky Linux documentation site. Um, so there, there's a whole lot that, that can be done there. And finally our web team, they're responsible you know, across the board for all of our web presence, um, including the design and um, setup of all of the different um, combined design and web here, but they're largely the same team. Um, their leads are Michael and, and Gabriel. They work together on both of these things. So um, also two kind of teams that are looking for additional team leads and, and help. And if um, you know design is something that you're into or web development, uh, there, there's ways to get involved in these teams as well. Um, but on to kind of the, the purpose of this talk, special interest groups, um, like what, what is a SIG? Uh, SIGs are, like I said, a vital part of their community, but they're really, they are different than our teams. Um, their teams focus on the core goal of Rocky to maintain a EL compatible, enterprise Linux compatible distribution. Um, whereas our SIGs allow Rocky to extend the enterprise Linux experience and to ideally help funnel contributors up into various upstream projects, um, engaging with other groups, both within and without the project, um, that have overlapping interests. So like there's a lot of special interest groups that Rocky has that are literally like one for one, no, not one for one, but the exact name of like a CentOS SIG or a Fedora SIG. And um, our goal with our special interest groups is to always encourage and funnel those contribu contributions, not just into Rocky, but upstream into the various communities that they also belong in to uh, benefit the overall open source community. Um, so our special interest groups really allow for focused development on an area that a community wants to solve a particular problem for. Um, they're also a pathway to membership into the Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation. Um, unlike some other organizations, uh, what am I trying to say with this? The RESF basically, the, the way to join the RESF is, is via mentorship. So we, we have all of our members that are part of the RESF are, are able to um, 
bring in members that are participating in the project, that are, that are joining, that are focused and uh, helping out and, and want to be part of the Rocky Linux experience, basically. So um, be joining and, and participating in a SIG is an excellent way to um, become known to the community, start to become mentored, become a member, all of this sort of stuff. Um, so each SIG more or less operates autonomously. Um, it has a charter and leadership. We have a whole guide on our website. This is uh, wiki.rockylinux.org. It's the special interest group guide or SIG guide. Um, so they, they have their own charter and leadership, but they are aligned with the broader mission of Rocky. Um, the, the teams, like I said, focus on the, the core Rocky EL compatible distribution, but SIGs extend upon that, right? So uh, these contributions in, in special interest groups, they, they produce things like ranging from custom packages um, and images for Rocky to documentation, best practices, um, like how to harden Rocky, how to use Rocky on a, um, a Raspberry Pi is, is obviously the, the simple one there, but um, Risk Five is, is something that our, our Altarch SIG is, is really, really focused on right now to um, build not only for Rocky, but for Fedora and for other upstream communities. Um, so yeah, uh, SIGs are kind of like mini communities where members are able to share knowledge and mentor each other, like joining on into the RESF um, and collaborating on like both big and small projects that could be useful to them. Um, they're open to anyone, beginners, experts, technical, non-technical, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, the spe special interest groups are sort of like a project in and of themselves where they need everything. Like there's packages that might need to be produced, but there's also documentation on the updates that need to go out and um, what the SIG is doing. We, we ask for reports from our special interest groups that we can publish uh, about like what they've done over the past quarter. And so um, keeping those alive help to like make, drive Rocky and make enterprise Linux as a whole, something that's super accessible. Um, I found that participating in Fedora and CentOS and uh, these various big projects that have a lot of contributors and a lot of domain knowledge can be really difficult and baffling to people in, in a lot of ways and, and just it's hard for a casual contributor, I think, to contribute to a lot of these projects. And, and something we're trying to solve with Rocky's SIGs is to lower that barrier to entry to make it something that is able to be something that can be contributed to as a volunteer, because that's what we are. Um, but Rocky is just RHEL, right? And it is, but it, it's, it's not, too. Um, when we first started, we had a lot of grand ideas. I think like a lot of projects. We created a lot of different special interest groups that uh, probably don't really have any active members at this point. Um, but we didn't really do this out of malice or, or anything bad. We just didn't really know what was happening with CentOS. Like we were creating a lot of these groups because we had no idea what was going to happen with the CentOS SIGs and what, you know, uh, desktop or embedded or kernels, like uh, there were so many different unknowns that we just kind of forked or started to fork everything. Um, but ultimately we, we kind of learned as we worked with and spoke with and, and understood what CentOS, the CentOS project was doing and, and different decisions that were voted upon and, and done there. Um, ended up working on, f uh, or ended up working out that we had a lot of overlap, but the overlap was in a lot of cases necessary. Uh, a great example of that is um, the network function vir virtualization, or NFV SIG. As part of my work with uh, the OpenStack Ansible project, we found via like CI testing basically that um, in between, I think it was RHEL 9.1 and 9.2, there was like a K ABI breakage in some InfiniBan package somewhere, and uh, Basically, the, the content that was being produced by the CentOS stream NFV SIG was not compatible with Red Hat Enterprise Linux and therefore Rocky. Uh, so I was able to join the NFV SIG, um, get branches for CentOS uh, 8, and start building against the RHEL, build, uh, yeah, RHEL 9 build roots and, uh, and distribute those packages and solve that problem. So uh, we, that's, that's an example, actually, of something that we, we 
specifically don't have a NFV SIG, even though there's probably one listed here. Like, there's no active network function virtualization SIG in Rocky because we're doing that work just in upstream and using the upstream um, build system, all of the policies and, and great things that are already there and not duplicating the effort where we don't have to. Um, but there's also examples where we don't, or where, where we're divergent. Like our cloud special interest group, um, for a long time, actually, until the most recent releases of 9.4 and 8.10 um, were significantly ahead of uh, the upstream Red Hat kernels for um, a handful of different K-mods, or mod kernel modules, rather, um, specifically around Google's uh, GV NIC, their Google Virtual NIC. Um, we're backporting a lot of code from mainline Linux on top of the RHEL kernels for 8 and 9 to enable IDPF, uh, DQO, QPL, um, the GVNIC stuff, like I said, uh, various CEV SNP fixes and, and some other things too. Um, ARM, like ARM Enterprise Linux as a whole is only available right now on GCP for Rocky through, through the cloud special interest group because of the work that we've done there to enable um, a custom kernels. Um, so. We, we really do participate or, or encourage our SIGs to participate in these upstream communities because um, a lot of it is stuff that we rely on and also those other communities rely on too. Um, so there, there's a lot of overlap there. Uh, the first real SIGs. So <laughs> the, these four are the ones that were kind of there and have stuck around since the beginning. Um, and have really grown and sort of evolved over time. Like one of the initial goals for our alternate architecture SIG was for 32-bit ARM, and we're still going to do that someday. Um, it, it's but it's moved on from there. We're like we're we're going to be hosting 15 right now. Uh, Star 5 Vision 5 twos, which is a RISC 5 um, SBC, roughly equivalent to like a Raspberry Pi 4, um, as part of a build farm, so that our contributors that are interested in building Rocky for RISC 5 can go in, start building packages, have a repository, um, you know, storage, all this sort of stuff that they can use to build Rocky for RISC 5, and uh, eventually release that hopefully next year with um, with the release of Rocky 10. Um, so. I'll go over these kind of real quick. Uh, Altarch, as I said, an ARM 7 VL, 32-bit ARM. Um, basically, no one else cares about this at this point, um, which is kind of sad, <laughs> honestly, because there's a lot of hardware out there that's still using this. A lot of the old Raspberry Pis um, are 32-bit are ARM processors, and so it would be able to being able to run Rocky on these would you know extend their life pr fairly significantly with modern software. Um, some of the other things, like I said, Risk Five, but we have support for uh, a whole bunch of different ARM and, and x86 boards from Libra Computing, uh, Rock Pro, uh, Pine 64, all the Raspberry Pis, Orange Pi, Banana Pi, getting getting all the fruits that we can. Um, and that SIG is is super like we're getting ready to release stuff, and and this is also a SIG where if you would like to get a some specific SBC that you have working on Rocky or some SBC that you don't have, like we will buy you an SBC. We have a budget. We'll go buy you an SBC that you want to use. All we're really asking is that you're going to help us test that it works on the next versions of Rocky. Um, and that's a great way to get involved and get some free hardware too. <laughs> um, our cloud special interest group, I kind of already went into a little bit. We build images and packages um, to enable cloud Part of that is a, a kernel um, that we drag in um, upstream changes from Linux. We're currently evaluating like what, what's next because a lot of the work that had been done uh, for the GVNIC drivers and DQO QPL and I, I, uh, IDPF um, has recently been merged into RHEL. So now we're, we're talking with uh, Google and with, within the SIG to see like, okay, well, what do we want, what do, what does optimization mean now like we've called this the rocky optimized for gcp and it comes from this cloud optimized cloud kernel but what does that mean where do we going to go forward and what's the plan uh, and so there's there's a lot of active effort in in the kernel side but also just on packages um, we'd maintained a version of cloud in it in there for a long time that was uh, supporting IPv6 only subnets in AWS that hadn't been merged upstream. That actually just recently got merged in 9.4 and 8.10 um, due to you know, bug reports and patches we sent. And um, 
we interact with a lot of different cloud service providers. So um, Azure, AWS, um, I have where we have contacts with them. They're part of these special interest groups with us. Um, we actively uh, are releasing all of our images to these different clouds and, and want to grow those relationships as we can. Um, but we also, the, the cloud special interest group is a bit unique in that it is the only special interest group we have that produces um, like release blocking artifacts because all of the EC2 for AWS, generic cloud for OpenStack, and, and every other image we produce is, is part of that cloud special interest group. Um, that was done intentionally so that we would have a strong community in the cloud to, or cloud sig, to drive Rocky adoption there. Um, and I think it's gone pretty well. We recently just migrated for Rocky 9 over to Kiwi, which is an OpenSUSE tool for building images. Uh, it's like really, really simple. Um, and also something that you can take and extend and build on top of for uh, customizing your image and adding a package, removing packages, like whatever you need to do to it. Um, Kiwi makes that really pretty easy. And despite some bugs that we've had to open and, and workarounds that we've, we've had to put in, um, Kiwi has been a great experience so far, uh, especially as compared to Image Factory, which is what we were using before. <laughs> and we're still using it for eight because I don't want to break anything and I'm scared. Uh, <laughs> Our HPC SIG, uh, similarly, like um, we've had a lot of HPC related packages. Werewolf, uh, which is like a cluster configurator sort of thing and provisioning system, um, as well as, oh, that was just my laptop going to sleep. <laughs> um, Aptainer, which is a containerization thing, and, and also um, right now we're basically maintaining Slurm and Fedora, but uh, haven't been given maintainer rights on it yet. So um, that's something that's sort of in progress and we want to introduce more packages to uh, Fedora for HPC, Apple for HPC, and just generally have them in Rocky um, for usage by projects that rely on it. OpenHPC is like one of the projects that uh, is dependent now on Rocky for building um, packages like Slurm and Werewolf and AppTamer to uh, include in the distribution or in scripts that create uh, OpenHPC clusters. Uh, lastly is their security special interest group, which is, you know, as I was saying, distinct from the team. The team focuses more on the governance and, and organizational security. Um, our security SIG is uh, basically just around hardening Rocky and, and introducing patches that, um, like we have OpenSSH patches that uh, disable a whole bunch of linkages on it that aren't necessary. We have a Linux kernel runtime guard uh, uh, introduced that builds, or that builds against the kernel to uh, protect your kernel and, and uh, in, in runtime. Uh, we've introduced hardened malloc and, and we've introduced some other packages up into Fedora and Apple to um, support various security related uh, aspects like password quality check is, is one of them that can be installed to like enforce um, password quality like requirements for um, PAM basically. So. Besides the current SIGs, uh, those four that I listed, we have a whole bunch more. <laughs> um, some of these have various overlaps, like HPC and AI probably should be one SIG. Um, cloud is there, you know. There's also some SIGs that we have that need, ha there's a lot of user interest, but there's not been any like leadership interest from anyone wanting to step up and help to, um, push these forward. So like the hyperscale and VFX ones are, are kind of the, in that um, sort of area as well as desktop. Uh, actually recently we'd have been having a discussion about maybe doing a um, gaming SIG and I'm thinking sort of that belongs in desktop. Um, but so that might be, a, you know, an interesting thing if, if anyone is interested in uh, running gaming stuff on Rocky, Steam all those sorts of things. We do have a Steam group too. There's like six of us in it, but um, if you want to join it, please do. <laughs> um, Secure Boot is something I want to touch on here too, because a lot of the special interest groups that we've been creating and, and fostering have direct Secure Boot artifacts, like the kernel, uh, our Cloud SIG produces a kernel. We have like, a kernel special interest group that builds upstream kernels, um, the mainline stuff from, from Linux.org, uh, kernel.org, rather. Um, 
and you know HPC. There's a whole bunch of drivers for NVIDIA and Intel and XYZ that are wanted and also wanted to be signed. So um, right now we're working through policy and drafting policy on like how special interest groups can interact with that signing those signing resources and how we can federate that out to um, support community being able to go and build and sign those artifacts with authentication uh, rather than what is true for basically every distribution out there, including Rocky right now. It's like a, a special group of people has permission, authority, ability to go in and uh, build those packages and you know do X, Y, Z to them. So uh, we, we're really very interested in not having any single person or single group of people uh, entirely responsible for um, anything in the project, but specifically Secure Boot. Um, and, and so there's a whole, whole bunch of things I think I can think of uh, around technical and non-technical uh, help we could use for drafting and, and implementing the, that policy to, to make it real. Um, also, if you're interested in a SIG that's not here, like something that you want to do on Rocky that doesn't fit in any of these categories, new, old, whatever, um, we can, new SIGs can be started. Like we, we have a bunch of infrastructure, we have a guide uh, I had pointed out earlier on how to get involved uh, or how to start a SIG. Um, we have a page on how to get involved in SIGs. So there's a whole bunch of things. Um, if you're more interested in that, feel free to talk to me. Um, so one of the things that we really want to let SIGs do as I was starting to touch upon it, is let them kind of control their own destiny. Um, we want them to be able to do what they want, to move fast and break things, at least for small values of fast and break. Um, Rocky is stable at its core, and that's something that our community is really dedicated to. Like, every time we talk about anything, <laughs> changing something in, in Rocky, like, we get a lot of feedback that, like, no, it should just stay the same. <laughs> um, except for when people want new packages, but that's a different story. Um, and so, so we want to enable SIGs to move and do things that are interesting and change and evolve Rocky Linux and Enterprise Linux um, without, like, fostering an environment where people are now relying on that and the SIG is like moving and breaking stuff every other day. So uh, it, it's kind of an interesting balance that we um, we have to walk through. But um, the, the openness, I think, of CentOS Stream has really helped in a lot of this uh, this effort because we are able to go and contribute to CentOS Stream and, and say like, oh, if you want to make that change, well, we can go make that in CentOS Stream. Like, here's how to do that. Let's go walk through the process. Um, so because of like how Rocky is positioned as an enterprise Linux distribution, the SIGs audiences also have like largely similar wants from enterprise Linux. And so the stability thing um, is, is something that is really something we drive home with our special interest groups without making it so much of a burden that they can't do anything. Um, so from the infrastructure side, we provide a whole bunch of tools from Git to CI, CD, and testing with OpenQA, image building, um, release monitoring and notification stuff. Like um, We use Peridot, our build system, uh, for special interest groups to build and release packages. Um, and we're working on version two of Peridot right now, which is another place you can get involved if you're interested. Um, it's a Golang tool that we maintain and build to, or maintain and write to build and release Rocky Linux. Uh, and so some of the cool things that we're doing with that in version two are um, swapping out the storage subsystem completely to make it more um, efficient and uh, have a bunch of more features that will enable reproducibility. Um, and just general cleanup around like the UI and, and API and, and a whole bunch of different things there. Um, So this is Peridot. Um, as I said, there's ongoing work for the UI and UX, lower level engine changes, like adding uh, multiple versions of an RPM, which is something people have really wanted for a long time, and SIGs also want. Um, but Peridot is uh, is the way that seg SIGs can go in and build on all of our architectures from x86 and ARM to S390X from IBM's Linux One program, uh, S390, uh, PowerPC from the Oregon State University Open Source Lab, and um, a whole, whole bunch of other things. Um, 
So right now, Paradox relies on Kubernetes. It's not like the greatest, but we're aiming to reduce or to change in the next version to basically be a single binary that can launch a, either as a server or a client mode. Um, and one of the not fringe, but direct benefits that we're, we're hoping this will introduce is the ability for like you, a user, to run Peridot yourself uh, and drive your customizations on top of changes that are coming from Rocky. So we'd have essentially like the build system would emit messages that you know a build is done or a release is available, and your version of Peridot essentially can then go and you know detect that that has happened and build your image package set, deploy it to your cloud um, accounts, and do whatever you need to do in sort of your realm, but uh, using the tools that we're already using to build Rocky. Um, but there's some, th there's some obvious reasons, I think, like that, but there's some non-obvious reasons, like RISC-V. Um, this is a, a box of Vision 5 twos that we, we got from the RISC-V.org uh, folks. Um, where for instance, it's like this where the system's like really, really low on resources already. Um, the overhead of Kubernetes for running Peridot on this would be kind of stupid. And so we, uh, the, the goal with the architecture change for Peridot, or architectural change for Peridot is to um, not just enable community use of the build system and, and artifacts of the build system, but also enable uh, our own usage to be more efficient of the hardware that we have. Um, as I mentioned before, too, like we do have a budget for buying you an SPC of your choice. Um, all we ask, you join us during release weeks, help us test stuff, make sure it's still working for you and other people that are, are using, um, might be using that SPC, too. Um, there's some boring stuff, too, that we provide for, for special interest groups. Um, Single sign-on, we're actively expanding how many things we, we can singly sign on with. Uh, Mattermost is our chat system right now that we don't have really any SSO, um, except for like some, like a handful of users that, that use LDAP. Um, but we, we provide the, 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 the services so that we can enable SIGs to host additional things as they want to. Um, we've had requests for um, all sorts of different software that people want to run. And, and we're not in the point right now that we're able to uh, deploy that stuff. But um, one of the, the short-term goals is container orchestration, basically like a what Fedora has, like CommuniShift, where you can run OpenShift jobs in their community, OpenShift cluster. Um, we want to have a basically a, a similar way that uh, our special interest groups and teams can run their infrastructure workloads without being needed or without needing the infrastructure team to be hands-on touching and deploying crap. Um, we also get woken up in the middle of the night for you. We host a bunch of hardware like these RISC-V boards um, and also chat, mailing lists, forms, and CICD, all that sort of stuff. Um, some of this, like I said, is in, in, in progress, specifically like the tighter integration around monitoring. Um, and documenting how like special interest groups can take care of some of the infrastructure, but uh, as a whole, like we have a whole bunch of stuff for special interest groups to use and deploy and get um, packages hosted on a global CDN, basically. So um, it, it's a really kind of appealing option I feel for anyone who has some packages that they want to be deployed in a more enterprise sort of manner, um, which which we take kind of personally. <laughs> So how can you get involved in a SIG? Um, it's really easy. All you basically do is show up. Um, the SIGs meet. We have a public calendar you can find. Um, if you go here on rockylinux.org, the screenshot's a bit old, but I think the tab is the same. If it's not, sorry. <laughs> um, but you know, find our calendar. It goes to Google Calendar. You can find join. Um, Google Meet is pretty much what they all use. Uh, Etc. Right. So, so any sig that matches your interest, you're welcome to join the meeting, introduce yourself, and, and start becoming part of that that team. Um, our sigs meet regularly. Regularly, like I said, um, every sig has a channel on Mattermost. It's also bridged over to IRC on Libera.chat. Um, so, you know, there, there's countless ways really to get involved in these sigs, and it really just starts with showing up. Like, um, I, I think if you ask anyone who has 
been part of any of our special interest groups or has been part of Rocky Linux, like being there and being involved in discussions and participating, even if it's not in a technical perspective, um, is worth its weight in gold uh, for, for our special interest groups that are completely, you know, interest-based things that um, people, people are part of. Um, everyone's really welcoming and friendly. Um, I'm possibly or probably, oh no, what did I do? Uh, the scariest person that you will meet at the Rocky Linux project. So, uh, did I already talk about this? I've reordered these slides a few times. Some of the stuff cl the CloudSig does um, work on broad availability of the, the special interest group artifacts. Uh, so we have EC2 for AWS, we have Oracle Cloud images, we've got container images in various formats from uh, standard one to minimal, uh, UBI, universal base image like Red Hat um, creates and, and publishes. Um, we also have toolbox images through the, the toolbox project where you can spawn up like a kind of ephemeral-ish instance of, uh, of Rocky and do some work and um, have it reset to a, the initial state or keep the state, whatever you need it to do, right? Um, got two different sorts of layouts for most of our images. We have got a base regular partitioning, we've got LVM. Um, we have vagrant images, we've got the kernel thing that I had talked about, uh, the cloud thing, backports I talked about, and um, collaborating upstream with stuff. Like we recently partnered with Azure on um, their community galleries feature, which is a way for you to access um, images in Azure without any marketplace shenanigans or, or anything like that. Like you just simply go and request the image. I wanna launch an instance with this image, done. Um, you don't have to even agree to any licensing terms. Well, you implicitly agree to licensing terms, I guess, but um, we're also working pretty closely with the Fedora Cloud Special Interest Group, which is getting started again, as well as the OpenSUSE Cloud Special Interest Group, um, or team, I guess they call it there, um, to, to enable those communities to release uh, onto these various clouds too. And we're working like directly with Fedora on some of these tools, um, you know, like our, our Kiwi image descriptions are based on, on the Fedora ones and um, we're contributing to not only Fedora and but Kiwi upstream of that um, with, with some of our stuff, so. Uh, SIG HPC, like I mentioned, there's a lot of collaboration there with um, OpenHPC. Um, patching and updating various Fedora packages and, and getting new things available as it's uh, as necessary. Um, GPU support, we recently did some work with Intel to enable the Arc GPUs. Um, so we have a, a testing kind of K-mod that we're working on and hope to get that secure boot sign, you know, subject to some of the policy stuff that I was talking about. But um, we, we want to work on NVIDIA stuff next because that's a pain point for people, but uh, there, there's a whole bunch of different classes of drivers and, and K-mods and um, things that the HPC world wants and needs that uh, would be a really good fit for, for building in Rocky that um, when when that special interest group gets time to, they will they'll definitely be working on that. Um, also some interest in like, you know, TPU stuff. Google has a whole bunch of different um, TPUs that you can access, the Coral ones, but also cloud hosted ones. Um, they just recently announced one that um, they want to work with Rocky on, on getting Rocky support for, so. Um, and then the IDPF cloud art humanity thing I had, I had mentioned too. So, upcoming initiatives. Altarch is working on RISC-V bootstrap and uh, SBC documentation. We've got like, eight or nine different SBCs that we have Rocky working on that is kind of unique to Rocky, um, but isn't documented. We don't have a whole lot of, um, you know, there's no table that you can go look up as my SBC supported. So they're working on that. Um, HPC, we're doing end-to-end -end testing for, for different clusters uh, and, and doing like installability and, and um, regression testing on packages as well as the release monitoring notification stuff so that SIGs that are maintaining packages from upstreams can be notified when there's a new version, go and build that package, et cetera. Um, yeah, so um, there, there's a whole bunch of ways to get involved and, and expand Rocky and all you really need to do is, is you know, join. So. 
If you want to get involved, um, this QR code will take you to chat.rockylinux.org. You can create an account and sign up and everything. Um, you can also just go to chat.rockylinux.org. Um, check out our news, our forums, and our mailing lists aren't super active, but you know, they're there. People like them. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Any questions? <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>